Today, let's talk about news. And in particular, learn how scandals can alter the perception of trusted government organisations. This UK news item is being talked about a lot by ordinary people, but it's also being discussed in the British Parliament. Let's learn something today about British culture while we talk about the post office scandal. You may have heard about this. Imagine one of those iconic red post boxes. It's a symbol of British culture. And in fact, I talked about these in one of our podcasts, number 543, from June 2022, when I was talking about the Queen's Jubilee. And I mentioned the craze for crocheting post box covers, which has swept across the UK. It's still happening. It was a lockdown craze, which has continued. So the red post box is the symbol of the post office. Until now, a trusted UK organisation, but perhaps not anymore after this news item. An alternative title for this podcast, The Human Cost of Corporate Errors. So this is the story of the very real deep human impact of a faulty IT system and an organisation that just doesn't seem to care. Listen on to find out more about the post office scandal. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. If you're familiar with Adept English, then you'll know that listening to podcasts like this one, especially on repeat, really helps your English language learning. But if you're new to Adept English, or if you want to understand more about how this works psychologically, then sign up for our free course, The Seven Rules of Adept English. You can do this on our website, adeptenglish.com. The secrets of learning to speak English fluently are all included in this course. So the post office scandal has rocked the UK. First of all, the word scandal, that's S-C-A-N-D-A-L. A scandal means the report of an action or activity that shocks people and that people disapprove of. So when a scandal comes to light, people are outraged, angry about what's happened and see it as a big injustice. It's not right, they say. That's a scandal. Another example of a scandal in the UK that happened a few years ago, the MP's expenses scandal. This was in 2009. In this scandal, it came to light that many members of the UK Parliament, many MPs, have been putting in expense claims for all sorts of things that they weren't entitled to. Claiming taxpayers' money for things they shouldn't have been. Famously, one Conservative MP, Douglas Hogg, charged the UK taxpayer £2,200 for cleaning his moat. That's M-O-A-T. If you've ever visited a castle and it's got water around it, that's a moat. So he put in an expense claim for the cleaning of his moat. This is not an allowable expense for an MP. That was a scandal. So the post office scandal, which is currently in the news, similarly is making people angry at what's happened. The situation has been known about for a while, but it's a UK TV drama which has been showing since New Year, since the start of 2024, which has really brought it to people's attention. Now the British Parliament are looking at measures which will overrule the process of the law courts to try to sort this one out. It's a story not just about technology going wrong, but it also challenges our trust in organisations, particularly government organisations. Imagine for a moment running a post office in the UK, in a quaint English village, say. You're a respected person, a cornerstone of the community, we might say. Picture your world turning upside down over something that you didn't actually do. The police roll up in a car outside your post office and arrest you. You're tried, convicted, and you go to prison, all for something that you didn't do. 
This has been the harsh reality for many people caught up in this scandal. So the post office is an organisation wholly owned by the UK government. It's separate from the Royal Mail. That bit is responsible for the delivery of letters and parcels. And that part was privatised some years ago. But the post office remains under government control. The post office has lots of branches. So that's shops distributed all over the place throughout the UK. There are main post offices in large towns or medium-sized towns. And in many villages and districts around the place, there are little post offices called sub-post offices. And the people running these, members of the public that agree to take on the job, the franchise, they're known as sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses. So you go to the post office in the UK to buy stamps, to post your letters, but it's also where you go to renew your passport, buy insurance perhaps. You can exchange foreign currency there. They deal with driver's licences and you used to have to pay your tax on your car at the post office. You can now do it online, of course. Also, it used to be where you bought your TV licence. You can't watch TV in the UK without a television licence, even if you don't watch the BBC. It's illegal. So basically, everybody has dealings with the post office. If you live in the UK, you've no choice but to go to the post office for something. They also sell chocolate, pens, stationery, paper, newspapers, etc. as well. And until now, they were seen as a friendly hub of the community, particularly in small villages. So what's the scandal? Well, in 1999, the post office installed a new computer system called Horizon. And this Horizon, this system, was supplied by Japanese tech company Fujitsu. This is where the problem started. Errors that turn out to be in this computer system have resulted in hundreds of sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses being wrongly accused of crimes, being tried, convicted and even being sent to prison, all because their post office business accounts didn't balance. The Horizon IT system repeatedly made it look as though money had gone missing. And the post office told the sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses, you have to pay this money back out of your own pocket, out of your own pocket, from your own money. Some of these people had to take out second mortgages, loans, in other words, to pay the shortfall. Some of them went bankrupt. That's B-A-N-K-R-U-P-T, which made them look as though they were incompetent financially, which wasn't the case. As I said, many of them went to prison. Most lost their businesses. Many lost their homes. And four sub-postmasters killed themselves as a result of this situation. In the UK, it's really, really hard to get a job if you've got a criminal conviction, if it's believed that you committed a crime. So a lot of this is about damage to people's reputations. That's R-E-P-U-T-A-T-I-O-N. Your reputation means what people think of you. You can imagine being a sub-postmaster or sub-postmistress in a small village. It's a public-facing role, a community role, and many of these people felt disgraced in front of their communities. What has been criticised, and perhaps what's caught people's imagination, it's another example of a large organisation exercising power over the little person. The sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses were told, you're the only one having a problem with this IT system. No one else is having any difficulty, just you. You must have done something wrong. Clearly, this was untrue. Over a period of 16 years, there were 900 people wrongly convicted as a result of this, found guilty of a crime in a law court because of this IT system and because of the post office's attitude to it. People paid as much as 60 or 70,000 pounds out of their own pockets because of these system errors. And actually, this went into the post office profits in the end, while the people themselves were made to look like criminals. So this scandal has been known about for a while. 
But the government hadn't taken any action and it was letting the law courts, the UK judicial system, that's J-U-D-I-C-I-A-L, letting the judicial system deal with it. And of course, this was very slow and unfair. It's a very slow process and a very expensive process. So many of the sub postmasters and sub postmistresses didn't have any money to fight their cases against the post office. The post office, on the other hand, a large organisation, could afford all the top lawyers, good legal representation. So this was a case of small people trying to clear their names, fighting a large organisation. Many just gave up and accepted being seen as criminals. The post office used what we call scare tactics. It seems to have purposefully bullied, intimidated and threatened people. They told many of the people involved that they would drop the more serious charge of theft, that's T-H-E-F-T, that often carries a prison sentence with it, as long as the people pleaded guilty, that means admitted, false accounting. Many of the sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses did plead guilty to false accounting, even though they hadn't done anything wrong, so that they could avoid a prison sentence. As well as the post office being to blame in this, also Fujitsu seemed to have played a role. I worked in the IT industry years ago, and I don't think there's a computer system around that doesn't have bugs and errors in it. But when you put a new system live, you listen to the users of that system. You get people to raise complaints or errors to tell you what's wrong with the system. You then investigate those errors and you fix them. It appears as though Fujitsu didn't do this. Fujitsu preferred to blame its users, the sub-postmasters and the sub-postmistresses, even though it knew there were problems. In the TV drama, it's alleged that there was a basement in the Fujitsu building in Bracknell, near where I live actually, where Fujitsu employees were able to amend live data to change the figures in the sub-post office accounts. This is a very serious allegation and anyone who's ever worked in the IT industry knows that you don't amend live data. It's too risky, but surely this is illegal as well especially when people are being taken to court as a result. So Fujitsu knew there were problems with their Horizon system. They didn't own up to it. And the post office told the sub-postmasters and sub-postmistresses, you're the only one. No one else has any problem. So it really is shocking behaviour, appalling behaviour by the UK government organisation, the post office. The post office used to be a trusted brand, not anymore. The post office have also continued to pay money to Fujitsu for other systems, millions and millions of taxpayers' money, millions and millions of taxpayer pounds to Fujitsu. So it's taken a rather cheesy ITV drama about this scandal to bring it to people's attention and to get the government moving and sorting this out. This drama has made the situation real for ordinary people. It's added the human element. It's enabled viewers of the drama to say, what would it be like if I was in their shoes? Empathy is a very wonderful and motivating thing, isn't it? Anyway, let us know what you think of this story. Let us know if anything similar has happened in your country. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com. 